New game, homie. Uh, the internet is the new block. Uh, it's the new trap. It's the new hustle. Uh, it's the new trade school. Uh, it's the new university. Uh, uh, it's the homie. It's it's nigga. It's it. So, in the, in the future, uh, AI go knock out probably seventy percent of, of jobs that humans can do in reality world. Uh, except like like changing alternators. Uh, uh, uh. Rebuilding transmissions. Uh, so people are naturally going to be economically slaves. Not necessarily where they're going to be whipped on the back. They're going to be slaves who can go home. They're going to be slaves who don't have to live on the plantation. They can go home. But by such and such time in the morning, you better have your back here on this plantation working. You're going to work for half, half the day. You're going to work for half the day. You're not going to be able to take off to go to your kids' luncheons. You won't be able to go off to go to your kids' award ceremonies. You won't be able to take off to take your kids to the doctor. If you get sick, you won't be able to get a lot of sick days. Or you're not going to be able So it's coming to that. So if you break it down, if you look throughout America in, in blue-collar blue -collar jobs, the manufacturer sector of the job world, most warehouse jobs are working 12-hour shifts. Truck drivers are driving 16 to 18 hours sometime. Uh, so, so most people are working half the day. You sleep in four to six hours. That's a slave life. But we don't see it as that, right? So at work, we're slaves. When you log on to social media, you turn into a digital slave because you're on here and everybody is making money off of your labor, your, your intellectual property, your time, your energy, your pictures, and your posts, and you don't get nothing in return. So most people are digital slaves when they log on to here because they don't know how to tap into the monetization. And this is a multi-trillion dollar industry just by you logging on all the advertising all the commercials you watch so why not tap into each social media platform that you own and figure out how to get paid off of it facts facts that's 100 so the first question that we have for you today is you know we watch your 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 channel on youtube that's called game related podcast we noticed when you were doing one of your interviews you spoke about the united nations if you were on the podium today speaking on behalf of black people, what would you say to the United Nations? Uh, that black people need to be identified as a nation and, and not a race. But because because we, we, we could never get what's due to us because of our class of because of our classification and how we're identified. We're not a race of people. We are a nation of people. Who, are, who, who, who was brought to a land and trapped in bondage and oppression, right? The United Nations says that this country owes us reparations just like every other nation of people have got reparation. We are the only people on earth who haven't been reparated. So, 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 so with that being said, there's an open seat. There's an open seat at the United Nations for us. We don't have nobody to speak for us at the United Nations. So that's the first and foremost. I would claim us as a nation. Our name is nigger. Our name is nigger. Our religion is niggerism. We have a flag. So we first have to re-identify and reclassify ourselves to the world. We are not black Americans. Black is a color. White, white people don't identify as really white. They go whatever German, Irish descent that they have is what they identify with their bloodline. But we don't have a bloodline because our bloodline was mixed up by way of inbreeding, slave breeding. Uh, this baby sold that way, the mother sold that way, the father sold that way. So we don't know our bloodline. Mr. Charles, do you know how, do you know what steps it take to get to the UN? Uh, somebody to buy a ticket and fight and talk. Uh, stop trying to go to DC. Stop trying to meet with our congressmen. So that take that 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 take these passport brothers, homie, who got who who done went and done things across the country, across the world. 
But if we all made a cry, we all made a plea. Uh, we we did it for George Floyd, and and, and got the United Nations attention for George Floyd. Got the entire world's attention. Come on now. Yeah. So uh, we don't have the time or, or the luxury to do it, but but we can create uh. Uh, uh, a student council there, there's a student council member in middle school that's running for student council uh, there, there, there's a young lady that's going to graduate from the next high school graduating class is going to be she's going to graduate the top of the class cum laude uh, there's a there's a young dynamic uh, young black dude that made it out the hood that's just now for the pass the bar exam and he's going to become a lawyer uh instead of him going to become a public defender we supposed to be grabbing him and grooming him to go to the united nations for because he understand law and no law the person who go to the united nation have to understand law and no law that's what johnny cochran died trying to do homie get to he was he was the one that was going to the united nations but he died on us right mr charles all right, the next question I have, what do you feel like the state of black youth is today and where their minds are today? Uh, there's no hope. Uh, there's no hope. Uh, the, the state, the, the state where, where they at is, uh, they're at destruction. Uh, uh, today's youth is the most self-destructive youth that the world has ever seen exist the the mind state is uh this is a it is natural to rebel as children as as young people uh it is natural to have some form of resentment toward uh, authorities and adults during your adolescent stage but but this group of children in, in this era, they're not getting to make it out their adolescent stage because they're hateful children. I'm a fan just like you is a Tupac, Mr. Um, Charleston, right? I'm a fan, I came up in the 80s just like you have. I'm a fan of Pop. When I listen to Pop, it's like you're talking about this generation of kids. He I was. got out of that when I listened to him. He it's was. About this generation of kids. He wasn't talking about us. Uh uh. What I see now, I see Mr. Charles. That I don't see any black pride, and that's scary. Well, you, no you, black. You, you pride. can't. You can't have black pride if you ain't got black love. You can't have black love if you don't have self love. You can't have self love if you ain't get mother love, father love, grandma. You got to get some love, some form of affection. But in our race, I'm looking at our race, and I go state to state just like you, and I see our race is. The, the state they in, the kids, the, the state of mind these kids are in, man, I don't think we gonna, I don't think we'll make it to 2050. Oh, uh, uh, well, my, my generation and your generation, it's something uh, wrong with this generation of humans because they're scared. It's like the Willie Lynch syndrome is sent in them. It's like they're scared of the youth. And I, uh, I'm one of the ones who ain't scared of the youth. I'm a, I'm, me and you almost the same person, but in different uh, bodies. Well, 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 that, that, uh, that's because we don't live in the home with them. Uh, the people in the home scared of them. That's why everybody else scared of them. And I witnessed that, and I see as I see as I go, Mr. Charles, and I'm like, I'm looking at the homes, and I'm looking at the parenting. I'm like, ain't no discipline in these homes. And then when I come out in society, being that I'm an 80s baby, you know what I'm saying? I came up under, under love and all that, and you know, giving back and giving that. And respect, yes, sir, no, sir. When you see an adult talking, you don't talk. You don't talk back to an adult. You let the adult handle the situation. What I'm seeing, I'm seeing self description like you see, and I listen to these Tupac songs as regular. I'm seeing the self description. I don't see no growth in it. And the parents ain't trying to see it. It's like everybody's caught up in this social media life. And it's just our people. Because I go around, and I go around the different states. It's the Mexicans working, their kids working. I have all my friends are from international cup, um, from overseas and all that. All of them are working people, working families. I got Mexican friends, Jamaican friends, 
Haitian friends and all their families together. And I only see this happening to the black Americans. That's the only people I see this happening to. So what I'm saying is, I see it's like a like that M Ultra. It's like it just pinned it on us. I ain't trying to say it's a race thing, but what I'm saying is, it's something wrong with us as a whole people. Uh, it's something's going on, the uh, it's, and, it, and, it's, and it's music is not affecting these other kids. I'm going to these households where these other uh, kids and other races are. Their kids are not acting like our kids. I think this problem came from when we was when we was young. I heard I heard kids used to say this, man. When I grow up, I'm not gonna raise my kids like that. But then I used to go to church, and they used to always say, "Spare the rod, spare the kid." And I now I get it. And we're in a predicament right now where the kids have no God. Nobody's teaching about God. No one wants to go to the church. Everything's corrupt. Brother, did you come to preach or you gonna let me talk to? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh. Uh, fam, you 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 left out the crack era because no other race was given crack like us. Uh, you left out the civil rights generation when they came in and put the warfare down. They didn't do that to nobody else. Uh, uh, you left out the fact, nigga, that we come from slavery, so we always play behind the eight ball with everything against us when we step out the house, whether that's going from public school to daycare. Homie, that's intentionally done against us. That's why it's against, it's only us. No other race get to talk about killing their people but us, homie. So some of these things are intentionally done to us to keep us like this. We didn't know nothing about crack, homie. Our government brought crack to our doorsteps and gave them to our mothers. Think about that, my nigga. But we didn't know that till now. Till Free Ray Ricky Ross came out and they given us snowfall. They did that to us, my nigga. That changed the trajectory of who black people were, the crack element. Because that took our grandmothers from us. Our grandmothers start sleeping with our friends. Our mothers, all kind of stuff start happening after that to black people that had never happened before. And then after that, guess what? The kids who was born to those mothers, they came along with a new form of biological chemical warfare called ADHD. Putting the kids on the psychotropic drugs while their mothers was on drugs. They did that to us, homie. If we go be real. So these are the crack babies. These are the kids that they gave Xanax to, Prozac to, Adderall to when they was talking ADHD, when they should have been talking school suspension and ass whoopings, when they took mama and them hands off our ass, my nigga. We ain't just went bad. We was done bad. We ain't just went bad, my nigga. We are not aggressive, violent people. Our brains and our nature are not even wired like that. That's why in the movie Django, they showed you the difference between a white man's skull and a black man's skull. Nigga, we not violent. We took on their nature. This is their nature. We mimicking something that we're not. We're going against our nature, homie. They are programming us. That's why it's a such thing as radio programming, television programming, and news programming. We are being programmed, my nigga. We're not being raised. They won't allow our single mothers to raise us because she got to work. They won't allow the daddy to come back in the home because it's too beneficial for baby mama to keep him out. Those are barriers and that's placed in the way because of our race. Only because of our race. So since we know this in this information age, we got to stop looking at us and start looking at the babies and come with a strategic plan to go indoctrinate third graders, just like the gay community target kids, just like the prison system target kids. The we got to start marketing and intentionally targeting third grade children, not teenagers, third graders, first graders, second graders, and indoctrinate them into what we want them to believe, just like the school system do. You fight fire with fire. Yes, sir. The next question we got for you, Mr. Charleston is, what's next? I see everyone's constantly, their mind is stuck on Joe Biden and Donald Trump, but what's next for America after Joe Biden and Donald Trump? Uh, war, war in America. 
uh, it, it's inevitable that at some point in our lifetime that bombs will be dropped in America, just like every other country have had bombs, have had war in their country. Just like what we're seeing in Ukraine and Russia, it will be here. But the only difference is the people to do us like that is already here in planet. They were here. They've been here since the 80s. Every country has America has been invaded a long time ago. The world know you can't beat America from attacking them from the outside coming attacking them. You can't beat them. So they've been sending people over here to learn us. America has 99 different tongues in it. They brought their cultures. They brought their people. They got stem. They got sleeper cells here. They got sleeper cells here. That's been waiting and they've been waiting and they've been living amongst us. They have assimilated. They know our culture. They know our highways. That's what's coming. Because we have weakened. We have weakened. We, we are no longer a superpower. We are a weakened superpower because we have been at war for over 200 years. United States of America have. We are weak. So only thing we got left to do is to, is to push a nuke and destroy the world and start a nuclear world war. That's our only major defense. But we was, we was attacked with the coronavirus. That's what people fail to realize. The coronavirus was World War III. The next is World War IV. That weakened our military, that weakened our government, that, that brought distress. Men... The first thing that happened when we realized what the pandemic was, was we shut our country down and we started passing war defense acts. If you do your research. So that's what's to come, homie. America is crumbling, is tumbling. And we're going against one another. That's where we losing it because America is no longer united. Democrat hate Republican. Republican hate Democrat. Gay hate straight. Straight hate gay. It's too much hate in America for America to win any more wars. Great answer. Our next question is, why do you think there are more black female artists being pushed right now than black male artists? Uh, because they're, because because gangsterism, uh, gangsterism is 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 have expired. It, it's gayism and hoism. So there's a new spirit alone in 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 the pop and entertainment culture. There's a Jezebel spirit. Uh, nigga, ho sh sell now. Uh, a uh, gangster don't really sell no more. Uh, gay gay gangster sh that's gayism. Gay gangster sh that's gayism. Uh, young Thug introduced the gay gangsterism. Nigga, wear a dress, wear this, shoot you, kill you, do what you want. He introduced that by what, eight to ten years ago? So now it's it's sprouted. It's a seed, it, it, you know, the seed done grew. So uh uh who who more that's a hell of a combination, homie. So that's why you see uh Saucy Santana running with the city girls, talking gangster shit as a gay dude to a straight man and other straight men in the industry going to go get bisexual men to get a fight together. You see this is going on? Gangsterism and gayism, homie, is now in bed with hoism. So what that breeds, homie, nothing but lust among kids. Orgy, Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah, no, nigga, that real, real freaky shit and make God return. That real, real freaking shit that make God return, homie. So that's what we seeing. The end. Uh, it, it's, yeah. We man. seeing the end of mankind, nigga. That's what we seeing. Yeah. Come see. All right, my next question. It's been 27 years since Tupac died. Why do you think they're coming after Keefe D now, 27 years later? Oh, this uh, all this all this information has been known, so nothing new has occurred. Uh, I I, I think they playing on us. I think they playing on us, homie. This man been saying the same things, the same things, the same things, the same things. 
Uh, and they've been having this, the, the, the same detectives been doing documentaries, repeating the same things. So uh, I think it's bigger than what we're seeing. And, and I think they're using this as a distraction for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. I think we're being distracted, homie, with, with, with the Tupac shit. And, and I'm saying, so what? His mama did. So what they feel? Man, don't mean, it, it shouldn't mean nothing to us at this point. His mama gone. Uh, and they already been knowing who did it, my nigga. They are, homie, it ain't nothing they can't solve. It ain't nothing that they can't solve, my nigga. So they already been knowing who did this. 27 years later now, it's just some white people now. Nigga, they fit to retire with a big name. They get to go out and retire, tell the Tupac story. The detectives who've been working on the case to get to close the case, they go end up being promoted to a lieutenant and a captain and a one-day chief of Las Vegas Police Department because their name is going to be attached to the Tupac murder. They're going to get to come out and tell a whole nother movie after the murder trial is over with. So it's going to make careers and generate revenue for the entertainment industry and the Hollywood powers to be. I was thinking it was going to generate them some new income, some new movies, some new documentaries, some new hip hop movies to make. This ain't got nothing to do with justice and solving no murder. Because they already knew. And they know who killed Biggie. All right, my, next, my next question is, why do you think most male celebrities like Deion Sanders, Shaquille O'Neal, Jamie Foxx, and Young Jock, are required at some point in their career to wear a dress to be successful. But they wouldn't take the. Oh uh, why, nigga? I I brought a dress, but I ain't taking that. Cause they think they they think it they think cause some of them like that dick. So they give you options. They don't force you. They lure you in. Yeah. Listen to me, homie. They give you options. They don't force you. They lure you in. Uh, they put you in situations. Uh, they take you through media training, as they would say. And in the process of media training, uh, your gay publicist or your, or your female publicist is going to have a gay hairstylist. And, and all of y'all are going to be staying in the same multi-million dollar house during media training. But they're going to keep you and the gay dude close to each other where y'all can share bathroom just in case you like gay dudes and they can keep you. Yeah, they're going to put you in situations. So when you see these niggas in dresses and they seem like strong, straight men, they got women's, that's because they don't like They didn't want to take the This was their option. Because, because uh, they don't force you, homie. They don't force you. That's why when you, that's why when you enter into their world, it's not by force. They don't force nobody into that world because you ain't going to keep their secrets. If you're forced in, they give you options. Which door you want to go through? And them niggas pick their door. You got to pick your door. You got to pick your door. When you, when you want to go through, when you want to get to the light, when you want to get to the light, you got to pick a door to go through. My next question is, and this is a very important question I think needs to be addressed in the black community. Why are black men failing to leave their households? Uh, we don't know how. We don't know how to love and we don't know how to lead. Uh, you, have, you have to be trained up on, to do that, homie. Uh, the homie said it earlier, he said, spur the rod, spar the child. But it also gave some instructions to the parent, not just to whoop your ass. Nigga, it says train up a child in the way. Training, not raise. There's a difference between raising and training. We were raised. We weren't trained. So even the Africans, when they got the 13, they went off in the jungle and had to go through the training with the village leaders. Uh, white kids go to Boy Scout, get some kind of boy training. Uh, nigga, get foot, go to football, get some type of training on how to lead, whether you get to flip the coin. Nigga, so military training. All men get training. What training we got, nigga, other than mama whooping and correcting? And in the process of mama whooping and correcting, who you watching love mama? 
So, 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 so when you give it to this little girl, the little girl have been raised to be strong, nigga, to be independent of, from you. Cause they done already told her, but she leave this house. Don't you rely on now, mother? So she done already been raised to be independent from you. So how she's been raised to not to trust you and go against you, nigga. You ain't been trained to show her. So how, how she go listen to you? You ain't been trained to show her. So it becomes about what y'all feel. That's why she can't trust you to lead, because it's about what y'all feel. You ain't got no training. All right, my next question is, where do you think the no, how did the no snitching policy begin in the black community? Where did it come the from? Niggas, from the gangster niggas who got the niggas who was scared of them not to, and then the niggas who was tougher than everybody, they snitched. It was the gangster niggas who put the no snitching rule down. Y'all better not snitch. Only when it came, they was broke. They broke the codes. You can go back and look at all the mafia bosses who told. They was the ones who put the rule down not to, only for them to do it. That still goes on now. That's why the G niggas who tell get to come back and still be G. Come on, my nigga. It used to be, nigga, uh, nigga didn't have to tell. If it's four of us, one of us go just take it for all of us. And we did that because I know you're going to look out for my kids. You're going to make sure mama trash taken care of, and you'll put a little something on my books. Yeah, you might fuck my woman, but nigga, you're going to do this for me. Them rules and, and codes of ethics don't exist no more. Well, nigga, I can raise my hand and say, I did this so all three of y'all can go. That's how it used to be. But the niggas came along, homie, and it's always the nigga at the top who broke the rule. It wasn't the niggas at the bottom. The niggas at the bottom stayed loyal, would sacrifice their family and, and their kids for the niggas at the top. The nigga at the top, when he got, he would give up the niggas at the bottom to get off. That's why this shit don't stay. That's why it ain't no more loyalty. The nigga at the top came up with a rule that he kept breaking. So that's why it's no honor amongst thieves. You would be loyal to this nigga, homie, that's got the homie, and he'll give you up. You his shooter. That's what John Gotti done to Sammy the Bull. That's why Sammy the Bull gave him up, nigga. They couldn't have got John Gotti without Sammy the Bull. But Sammy the killer. Johnny was John wasn't the killer. Sammy was. So uh slavery, uh Jim Crow, heroin, gangs, crack, abortion, <laughs> and no snitching and gangster rap have been the most detrimental elements to black people's civilization in America. So go back and play this and take those things down, homie. The no snitching is in there with crack, Jim Crow, slavery, abortion. Yeah. All right, my next question. What do you think happened to R&B music? I noticed the R&B music up today isn't about love anymore. Most R&B music is about breakups and heartbreak. What do you think happened to R&B music? Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, don't hear any more love in the music. I, what, what love have left us, homie? Oh, uh, nigga. My niggas just kept out of here 80s, baby. Homie, all we knew was love in the 80s. It wasn't until the 90s when crack came, when love became kind of unidentifiable. Uh, homie, crack did something to the hearts of our people. Uh, it rewired our hearts and our minds. Homie, all we knew was love in the 80s, nigga. Uh, 
Nick, nigga, we was in the sixth and seventh grade singing love songs. Oh, uh, nigga, the nineties had great love music. That was the product of the eighties, right? So the product of the nineties is, oh, uh, I don't. It, it went to more sexual in the two thousands. Uh, it became about sex, sex, sex. Now it it, it evolved into. Angry fucking. It's angry fucking now in R&B music. Uh, it don't soothe the soul no more. Uh, it entices the desires. Uh, it don't it don't help you. It don't help you. Give you the words to mend a broken relationship. It don't give you the tune and the sound. To, to help mend a broken heart. It don't help you figure it out no more. Nigga, the love song used to help you figure it out. Well, nigga, you used to could take a love song and take some of the words and turn them into a sentence in a conversation and talk to your woman and it sound like you saying it. You can't do that no more. If you do that now, y'all going to end up just So if you look at if you look at the R and B, uh, on top of what we see in rap, what we see in with uh, homosexuality being uh, propagated and promoted to children uh, and not being discreet about it, it's a it's a it's a, it's more like a lust spirit that America is is, is being bred to have, uh, where everybody just go be having. In the future, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and, and what and what's that's going to end up happening? Uh, uh, the 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 older perversion people is going to go back to like the 1920s when a when a 30 year old man want to have a 15 year old wife. That used to be legal in America. Go back and watch Color Purple, motherfucker brain, because it's gonna we're gonna we're going back to being poor again. This country is not being being born rich again. So imagine the, the rich man, because we worship and idolize rich people. Imagine a rich man showing up in the ghetto. He wants the poor woman's 16 year old daughter. He give her a hundred thousand. R. Kelly did it. Good for you. Come on now. But imagine when, when, when the conditions get worsened because America is going to the rich and poor status. It won't be no more in between. Nigga, either rich or you're poor in 20, 30 years. It won't be no in between. And, and so that's why you're starting to see uh, they'll take Dwayne Wade's son rather than promoting him when he was his son, where he can be a prideful young man. They helping him be a prideful young woman. They promoting him as the girl. But when he was a little boy, they wouldn't tell us nothing about him. When he was trying to be a boy, what if they would have promoted him with what he was trying when he was trying to be a boy? When he thought he was a boy, imagine what kind of boy he could have been had they gave him the light then. They made it popular for him to be a girl. Come on now. Do you think all sports are read? Yeah. Uh. Because because the gambling that goes behind sports and in the underground world supersedes what the what the players make. Vegas got their hand in everything, my nigga. Uh, we saw that with that fight, and I didn't even watch the fight, but just the aftermath of that fight. Uh, homie. Uh, yeah. Made you go watch the fight and see. So uh, I gambled for a while with the parlays. And, and I also took a quantitative statistics class to figure out how stats are, are created. Uh, homie, they cold when they tell you it's a three-point spread. It's a one-point spread. And that game end up coming down to that. How can they figure that out? I just watched the game last night. They gave 
who was that team who missed that field goal at the end last night? They gave them a two and a half point spread. They scored a touchdown, and all of a sudden, instead of them kicking an extra point with time expired to be able to win by three points, they get a unnecessary uh what it was called unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and they missed the field goal, missed the point afterwards, and they and they and they. And they they didn't cover the two and a half point spread and lose by two. That's oh, crazy. Oh, uh, come on. L let me just say this. Uh, that world, uh, that underground world, is so powerful. Uh, it it got John F. Kennedy to become president. <laughs> Nigga, the those people helped his daddy help him become president. When, when Donald Trump got ready to run, those people, nigga, do what they do and shake what they shake to make things happen. Uh, they, they, they control it. Uh, they, 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 they control it, homie. Uh, they bet on everything, my nigga. That world bet on everything. And, and 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 you don't know the faces of the players. That's how you know it's so powerful. Hey, who you think gonna win the election? Let's let's go around. You think Trump gonna nah. pull it off? Oh uh, nah nah nah. Uh uh. I I would like for Condoleezza Rice to run. Condoleezza Rice is the best and purest thing we got left right now. Uh uh, I think they gonna give us Biden again because because Biden because Biden is a puppet. Uh, uh, uh Biden is a puppet for the Ukrainians. Uh, they've been doing business over there for a long time, homie. Uh, Biden is a puppet for the Chinese, and they one of our enemies. He a puppet to them, homie. Uh, Biden is one of the oldest living government officials outside that other woman just died in the 90 something he's one of the oldest living he's been in there a long time homie he owe a lot of people some favors he been in there too long it was never designed for them to be in there that long if you study if you study it's social studies it, it was never designed for them to be in there that long because once you're in there that long, you become absolutely corruptible. Absolute power, absolute corrupts. So, so that's why, so that's why George Washington and those, those powers to be said that we're, we're only going to do two terms because if you're in power for so long, homie, you corrupt, and he's corrupt. Why do you think they're coming so hard after Donald Trump? I see they've never came this hard for a, an American president before to try to arrest them. Why do you think they're coming so hard after Donald Trump? Uh, more, more government officials uh, was identified, arrested and charged for child s trafficking under, under his presidency. Uh, he's a businessman. He's the first businessman to sit at the president uh, White House and run America like a corporation as it should have been instead of trying to run it as a country. When you run it as a country, you see what's happening. Uh, America became a corporation in the 60s, I believe. Probably earlier than that. But this is a corporation. Uh, that's why you never hear them speak about the American citizen. You don't even hear that term anymore. The American citizen. You don't hear people say citizens' rights. Uh, because once we became a corporation, uh, this is not about racism. This is not about socialism. Uh, this is not about classism. This is driven by capitalism. This is a capitalist country now. Uh, so your rights don't mean too much. But you do have some rights. That's and, and what are those rights? Uh, your consumer rights. You are no longer a American citizen. You are a American consumer once they pass the Consumer Reporting Crediting Act. 
That's why you hear the media refer to us as the American consumer. Well, the, we're identified as consumers now, homie, because this is a capitalist country. Capitalism. Uh, we stuck on socialism and racism. Socialism is a motherfucker getting your food stamp world for our stimulus checks. Uh, racism is, is the shit that we can't see that we think we can see. But nigga, if you tap into capitalism, you can beat racism. So they tricking us with the racism shit. Uh, that's why the black man can't create economics. If we tap into capitalism, we go start creating economics. Nigga go go back to trying to sell a little dope. Nigga go start trying to uh, 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 hook up radios again, uh, cut grass. But we squabbling by racism, homie, so we missing capitalism. Capitalism trumps citizenship. You got more consumer rights than anything, any other rights in the world, homie. If you complain as a consumer, nigga, you get more, yeah, you get more for your bang and your buck than you do an uh, American citizen complaining about what rights you don't have. Because of the Patriot Act, homie, we forfeited our rights as American citizens to our government because we, 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 they tricked us out of fear, fear of terrorism. So because we agreed to have the Patriot Act, we don't have American rights anymore, but we do have rights as consumers. My next question is, the United States was sued at the United Nations and International Court by Iraq for war crimes and genocide, and they were convicted. Why do you think nothing has been done about that? Uh, who's going to tell America to do but what they conquered? Who can come make America pay for the people that they conquer and oppress? The United Nations also said that they should give us and they owe us reparation and that we are being treated inhumane and unjust in this country. They made a statement. But who go tell America what to do with they niggas and they saying niggas? We're a conquered people. What so, gonna, now go ahead, fam. I said, what do you think they're going to do about the border? What you think about the border? Uh, the, 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 the border is a play. Uh, the border crisis and the border issues is, is, is top five threat to black Americans. Not securing those borders, homie, is probably, that's a, that's a, that's a grave threat to us. Because they don't come as allies to us. They come with their culture and their people, and that's it. Our only ally left, homie, is the white American that grew up here, went to school with her, like basketball, like LeBron James, like Steph Curry, like a little rap music. Not necessarily got to like black girls. Not necessarily want you f their sister. But that's our greatest ally, homie. It ain't them foreigners. It ain't them Mexicans. It ain't them Chinese. It's the white man who love his country. That's what I see. That patriotic white boy. That patriotic white boy, that's our ally when this shit go to getting crazy. This is our land too. He brought us here. We best friends. The white man and the black man is best friend. That's why they don't get along. That's why they always getting into it. That's why they act like they hate one another, but they really best friends. Like two brothers. Go back and watch Archie Bunker, nigga, and, 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 and uh, uh, George Jefferson. Uh, George Jefferson, no, nah, homie, that's the white man and the black man. They really, and that's the product of what Obama was. Obama was raised by his white racist granddaddy who had a black friend and he sat and listened to them talk. That's how Obama learned to be who he was. My next question is, what I've noticed in a lot of black families once the grandmother passed away, once your older aunties and older aunt and uncles pass away, you rarely see black families get together anymore. I don't see any black family reunions. I don't see black families getting together during Christmas crime or Thanksgiving time. Everybody's doing their own thing at their own household. Why aren't black families getting together anymore? Well, they After they the, uh, the Africans call that individual the griot, the griot. Uh, Naturally, the griot is a is a 
oral historian. So Africans were oral historians. Uh, to remember everything, homie, you got to have a great mind, even when you're old. And, and to be able to remember different recipes, uh, different ways, remedies, uh, different ways to do things. To, so to remember all this so you can teach this, right? Uh, the reason why it dies because nobody is in the kitchen cooking when grandmama cooking during the family gathering. We show up when the food done. Nobody's in the kitchen getting the recipes. Uh, nobody's going over there sitting at the foot of the bed talking to her, asking questions, drinking from the river of the old. Sitting at the feet of the old nigga, picking up what they dropping down. Ain't nobody doing that no more. We shame the old now. That's why young kids think something wrong with being old and they try to make you look bad for being old because we never learn to get from the old. So when grandmama gone, homie, our whole family gone because we don't know nothing no more. We don't know who her mama was, who her daddy was. We don't know nothing about the family no more. So guess what? We lost in the wilderness when they gone. A family divided. So now we don't eat together no more. And now our children grow up in a world alone by themselves. And they once had a family. And they don't have no family no more. Because they lost connection by way of their parents. The grown-ups get selfish, homie. And realize that one day I'm going to be gone, man. And these kids go need each other as family. So they don't feel alone in this world, homie. But because we fucked up, we drag our kids over here in the corner. When we leave, when we leave this earth, they by themselves. They don't know their cousin. They don't know nothing inside their family to connect. They just vulnerable out here. Same thing we was just saying. It's like we got family members who who haven't even met their cousin. We got family members who are 10 and 11 years old who are cooped up in the house who don't have, haven't even gotten an opportunity to meet any of their family members. It's like, it's like families aren't how they used to be back in the day. You know how in white families, if you got a, you got a, a meth addict, nephew the family still supports them they're going to take him to rehab but if it feels like if you have flaws in the black community your family cuts you off how do yeah. you feel uh but 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 they'll they'll have these uh these on and off relationship with they with their friends they, they they'll be more forgiving to their friends than they would their family uh that comes from bitterness that comes from bitterness, homie. That's the unhealed childhood trauma. Uh, when all the family is so quick to dislike and hate and not talk to one another. That's the bitterness in the family that's getting passed down to the kids. Cause the kids want to know their cousin over there. That you, the kids want to play with their cousin, but you won't, they can't go play cause mama and daddy don't like each other. So that's the curse that you, put on the kids. The white man don't do that. The white man don't divide the family. So when we get grown, like right now, at some point, nigga, somebody in the family got to say, man, I'm going to be the one to do this. We're going to start having Sunday dinner, such and such, such and such. At least once a month, we're going to have dinner over here. Somebody got to start making that sacrifice. Home, I watched my mama put the family back together doing that. And right now today, nigga, every Sunday we got to be at mama house, nigga. Grandmama go be over there. And, and if the ones that don't like each other don't speak to each other. But them kids go go in that backyard and play, get on the trampoline and all that together. They don't know this is going on with the grown f They miss their cousin. Because of beef, the cousins and the the aunties and the mama that had from 10, 20, 30 years ago. What you got next? Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't. What's the, what? What is podcast go be at? My nigga, I like this podcast. Y'all got some straight up legitimate questions too, man. I like this. Yeah, for sure. For the we've been taking notes. I'm yeah. telling you, everything that you say, we're not one of those. Some of those people who just listening. I'm applying everything. I have a Schedule C nonprofit. I started my channel. Everything, every step, all the game that you gave, I'm the one of those people. I'm game related. I applied everything. I'm on my TikTok channel is monetized. I got products. I'm selling on TikTok. Soaps, shea butter. You got a nonprofit organization?
Yes, sir. It's called Young for Youth. Yes, sir. I have my own nonprofit organization. I'm reaching out to the young youth in any way possible that we can help. I'm trying to get them from ages from five to 15. Perfect number. Perfect number. Nigga, that's a perfect number. From five to 15. Another thing I wanted to ask you, I was listening to the radio a couple of weeks ago and there was a study that came, I don't know if it was from the National, some National Child Society, but they had a study that said children who are introduced to a tablet or an iPad before the ages of three years old have learning deficiencies. How do you feel uh, about that? Uh, but because but it, it dumbs down the brain. Uh, it, it, it reduces your ability to critically think. So, uh, when you give a kid that shit, homie, uh, the kid is soaking up, but because the phone does so much, the kid don't get to soak nothing. We had Legos to tap into that side of our brain. We had crossword puzzles to develop that part of our brain. They don't have that. They're just watching videos, cartoons, another kid. So nothing's developing and, and, and igniting the brain. So, man, it, it's like a the little yeah. be retarded. Yeah. <laughs> be like I was saying like that, man, yeah. Be, because for one, homie, the engagement of humans yeah, it is the critical part of, of brain development, homie, being able to play with other kids, going outside, get nature. When you get that motherfucker, that phone at one year old, <laughs> homie, nature don't exist to him no more. Going outside is not thrilling and appealing. And it's almost like it's a drug. They become addicted to the thrills that that phone create. So what that phone does it's, it's all it does is taps into the dopamine side of the brain. It's like having shit, like this little dopamine is just kicked off. Like, so man, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they be retarded. Hey, I, 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 I can see it. Home, I've been working with kids for too long. So part of one of my examples that I, that I talk about is, is soon, soon as a child begins to understand life, right from wrong, stop that, don't do that, and starts getting on the parents' nerves, the, the the phone becomes the new pacifier. When that motherfucker cries somewhere, they get that motherfucker the phone, he quit crying. He cry for, it, 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 man, listen, he, it, 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 the baby be eating looking at the phone. The baby be getting bathed and taking, eating at the phone. Baby be getting breastfed looking at the phone. You know, when I was little, when I was like, in the 80s, when I was there, my grandma was raised enough. When she know we were comprehending, she'll make up here something in the track and she'd be like, take that to the track can. What? You can do that, you can comprehend the sheep. And it's over with from now. You finna get yeah. strike. Yeah, yeah. If, if if you can say boo boo, pee pee, you can learn how to go pee. That's right. If you come tell me that you in this pample, you got good, you can this is your learn you learning. You can now you know you can be directed and instructed now. But you handicap them when you continue to let them pee pee. Yeah. That's where Kotlin come in at. Oh, that's why it's, it's 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 important to give them Legos or uh, crossword puzzles. Since they got to figure out, it's important to tell them go in there and find it. Mama, I can't find it. Tell them where it's at and let them find it. You don't go get it. Let them get frustrated trying to find it. That's what I did with my son. Yeah, my, my son my, my just turned five months. Like yep. Yeah, let them get frustrated trying to find it. Then after a while you come, let me show you where it said. This is where I, then you walk them through the instruction. After you see they just can't find it, but make them exhaust their brain at first. That frustration is going to make them try to come up with different mechanisms and different ways to try to figure it out. Versus you yeah. just crippling them and doing it for them. Yeah. What, what do you think about um, when they, um, when they, when the, um, they say lightning hit um, Hawaii, did you think that was lightning? Come no. with, the, with, the, with, the, with the wildfire. No, they, that's the game they put down when the California sh burn up every year. Uh, that's about land control, seizing land and taking land. I know I haven't seen not one interview from a resident.
who was in Hawaii. I haven't seen not one interview or anything That's from any person that this place. Yeah, now you're yeah, yeah, not. Nah, that's about seizing land, taking land, acquiring land, and, and rebuilding land for development. Those are development phases that they go through to force people to buy land, and all type of things. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I hear you first. Yeah, we hear. Yeah, we hear. Uh, but now, homie, uh, everything that the media shows us now should be questioned severely, and entirely, and entirely. If they they tell us it was a shooting, a main shooting, uh, and they don't give us a lot of details, they don't give us no background. We don't hear from his family. Uh, why do these men now, man? Then the shooter remained. He didn't even get found. They said they found him dead. Come on, homie. Uh, there are sleeper cells in this country. There are sleeper cells in this country. People who have come into this country playing like they are Americans, look like they're Americans, talk like they're Americans, but they have been trained. They have been uh, to, to come become an American to hurt America. So when, 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 when you look at all the Americans that they showing us that's getting time for storming the Capitol, they're not even showing you half the ones that wasn't American, playing like they was American, that went in that Capitol, that got away with what they got away with. Why they too busy trying to make an example about the Americans who was frustrated and did it. It was more people playing like they were Americans that wasn't Americans who stormed our Capitol too when they got away. Uh, yes, you think January 6th sent to the world about America? Yeah. Say that again. I said, what message do you think January 6th sent to the world about America? Uh, that America is no longer strong anymore. That America is no longer strong anymore. And it's more to come. It, it, it's, it's more to come because that was one portion of a frustrated part of America. That was just one portion of one part of a frustrated group of America. No, I so imagine, uh, I, I, I didn't want to pause to let people think about that before I say this. Imagine when those two groups unite like Fred Hampton was trying to get them to do with the Black Panther Rainbow Party. I was just finna say that. With the Rainbow with the Coalition. Rainbow Coalition. I was just there finna you say. go. When yeah. Fred Hampton was trying to get that, what a, what's gonna happen when America decides to do that? Those same two groups that seem to hate one another, that have totally separate ideologies, but share the same frustrations and unite under one cause. That's why so many police shoes to keep us divided. That's there crazy. you go. There that's you go. That's why. That's why. That's why it's different. That's why it's different matches. L listen to me carefully. That's why there are different matches in the entertainment world, nigga. White boxer, black boxer. White quarterback, black quarterback. White coach, black coach. That's why it's different races cards and games is being played and propagated to keep us divided because race only matters amongst us it don't matter outside the united states because it don't exist it's nation against nation well mr charles and white i don't know if we hit our 30 minutes yet but I know we have touched on a lot. I really appreciate you, man, for coming out for this interview. This 22,000 likes, my guy. We got 22,000 likes I'm looking at, my guy. So, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate that. This is, these are a lot of things that needed, that needed to be addressed in our community. Among